Hello and good morning, and welcome to episode 8 of The Asa Truman Show. My name is Patrick. I will be your host and your guide through this. I hope you do enjoy the new intro that came with this episode. And also, I do apologize for my new cane over here. Just my next step on my way to being a crotchety old man. <laughs> All right. What we are going to be doing this week, we are going to be continuing our reading of the Hallam Hall. Going through my interpretations of what each one means. If you do not agree with my understanding or my reading of it, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. With this here, I'll be going at the end of the episode as to how to get a hold of me. And we will go ahead and get get into this here, starting with verse number 60. (coughs) Excuse me. And we will also start with wetting my whistle a little. Okay. A person can measure his roof and house as well as how how much wood is needed to fuel his fire for the winter. With this, you know, a person can easily and should be able to tell what his needs are, how much fuel, how much food, everything of this nature, how much that his house will need for the coming months, you know, and should prepare for such. Verse 61. This one, the actual translation from the TAC version of the Havamal here, I think may have been slightly mistranslated. I will read it, and then I will also read the Bray translation that it provides. And we can discuss from there and decide amongst ourselves which one we want to go with. Be hungry when you ride to the thing. Be sure your clothes are clean. You will not you will not be judged by your clothes or your horse, even though it is not a true prize. Now, when reading the actual brain translation here, fed and washed should should one ride to court, though in garments none too new. Thou shalt not shame thee for shoes or breeks, nor yet for a sorry steed. You know, with this one here, being hungry or being fed, it's hard to say, you know, which we should really go with. I really say, go ahead and be fed going in for these things when you have to actually go and meet in front of people going to court, going to a social, anything of this nature. And no one is going to judge you really harshly if, say, like you've dressed in your finest, but it's not the absolute best new, not the absolute haute couture, or when you're driving in and say, like, you're, you're uh, say, Saturn Ion, and not, and not the... The uh, Buick Avenger or the Dodge Avenger or anything of this nature, they're not going to judge you on that. And if they do, they're not really among the people that you want to associate with anyway. Verse 62. Soaring over the sea, the eagle watches over it all. He is fond of the person that travels but, uh, but has few friends. I looked at this, and I finally had to go again to the Bray translation for a bit of context. Bray translation. Like an eagle swooping over old oceans, snatching after his prey, so comes a man into court who finds there are few to defend his cause. So what they're essentially saying with this you know, like the eagle that's having to stay up there and uh, be alone in hunting for his prey, so is the usual person having to go to court, and he discovers that very few people, if any, is actually going to stand in defense of him. He only has his own word to actually go on such. 
in verse 63. Wise, a wise person will ask and answer questions. One can know something but not two. Everyone knows if more than two do. Again, for uh, I needed a little bit better, more context, so I went to the so I defaulted down to the Bray translation. Each man who who is wise and would wise be uh, called must ask him and answer aright. Let one know thy secret, but never a second, but never a second. If three, a, a thousand shall know. Okay. <clears throat> so what the what the actual writer is trying to say with this is be honest in your word. Don't bear falsehood. But with this, if you must keep a secret, most you can tell is one other person. Don't ever tell a second person. And if uh, if a third person you tell, then a thousand people are going to know. That uh, it's just basic common sense. There, only tell one person if you got to have to share a secret. Don't ever tell more than that. In fact, actually, if I am not mistaken, on the TV show NCIS, that's actually one of the Gibbs rules. It, if you don't, if you don't know what the Gibbs rules are, watch NCIS. You won't be him. You won't be sorry. <laughs> Okay, verse 64. A clever person will not, will not show all their strength, for they discover that well, when uh, with others, no, no one claims all the courage. All right. Again, we have to default down to the Bray translation for a bit more context. I think with several of the translations, I uh, in this particular section, was a bit rushed on the actual translator's part for the TAC edition. I don't blame him. I'm not mad at them. It's just I'm thinking that they were a bit rushed. Bray translation. A wise counsel man will be mild and bearing and use his might and measure, lest when he comes, he come his fierce foes among, he finds others fiercer than he. Okay, so what he's tr trying to uh, advise us on this, be really soft-spoken, be mild in measure. Okay, try to keep your cards close to your chest and don't let on exactly how ruthless you can be with this. And don't show all your tricks. The second that you do, then everyone's going to know what it is and be able to prepare for it. Verse 65. Often for the words spoken to others, a person receives their reward. Huh? Okay, unfortunately, again, defaulting to the Bray translation here. Each man should be watchful and be wary in speech and slow to uh, put faith in a friend. For the words which uh, one to another speaks, he may win reward of ill. All right. So from that, we can actually get the context of what the writer is actually trying to say. Okay, in that, with it here, be really slow to trust somebody simply for the fact that with it, you may find out that you may be trusting the wrong person. With it, they may actually, you may reap ill rewards. You may actually wind up getting backstabbed for that trust. Verse 66. Too many times I came too early or too late. The mead was gone <clears throat> or had not been brewed. Those that, those that are unwelcome will find no feasts. Okay, now we're starting to get back into where it's kind of standard context again. Okay, and for this here, you know, it's trying to say don't be, you know, way early, don't be very late to any social or gathering. If you start doing it, really a lot of times you're going to find yourself unwelcome and not invited back. I have discovered this myself. I used, I grew up military, so there was always the 15-minute rule. 
Yeah, I will explain that later if, if you so want to hear about it. Yeah, but with such, I had to actually learn not to show up amazingly early because the people were not ready and here you were just kind of sitting around while they prepared everything and you just felt a little foolish for being there and no one else to socialize with other than the one person. Verse 67. At some gatherings, uh, I was treated well when I did, did not ask to eat or if there was uh, more than enough and I ate. Okay, with this, the writer is trying to say, try to gauge the actual, what, how much the person actually has that you're actually visiting. If you, you know, are looking around and seeing that the person hardly has anything, you know, oh no, that's fine, you don't have to worry about, huh, about me for eating, I can get see to myself. Or if you see that the person is lavish with things, sure, okay, you know, uh, Tuck in, yeah. <laughs> With this, yeah, the per whichever person they will appreciate you for for this, and they will come want you back again. Verse sixty-eight. <clears throat> for pe people, the greatest things are fire, the sun, great health, and living a great life. Okay, unfortunately, I had to go uh, go down to the Bray translation again for this one to sort of. Get more, huh? get more of a feeling of what the writer was talking about. Most dear is fire to the sons of men. Most sweet the sight of the sun. Good is health if one can but keep it, and to live a life without shame. And with this here, I have been told by certain people this can be a little bit ableist, yeah, but what what the writer is saying here is, you know, what's most important to people is, you know, the warmth of the fire, warmth of the sun, and one's health. You know, if you don't have those, then it's hard to know what you have. Yeah. Now, even, even without that, falling down to verse 69 here, our last one for... Uh, this recording. Even if a person falls ill, they can still be happy. They can rejoice in their children, their friends, their wealth, and the work they have done in their life. Okay, pretty self-explanatory in this. You know, even if you're ill, if you fall down, and I personally found this out myself when I wound up in hospital with cancer, with it, you can still be happy that you have your children there. Unfortunately, I am still childless. I'm hoping I and my spouse will be able to have some soon, but right now, I'd still be able to actually rejoice in having my wife supporting me there, my friends that was coming, huh, coming and visiting and being supportive of me. And wealth, I wish I could say I was wealthy. <laughs> Yeah, but you know we had we had enough to get by, and we had insurance that it was not a deep financial drain on us. Yeah, and also knowing the work in their life. Yeah. With it, it's always good when you know that what you have done is able to have made other people happy, have been able to help others. With it, that is a good. It is a good, satisfying feeling, and you know it's going to, going to travel with you, you know, both in this life and beyond. And there is no shame in it. All right, that ends our reading for this week. Okay, we are almost at the fifteen-minute mark here. Okay, thank you again for coming and being part of this with me. With this here, it is for all of you I'm doing this. If you have any questions or anything or do not feel I've translated right, please reach out to me. There is the actual YouTube messenger just under here. There is also Telegram. Telegram. Yeah, I'm a, actually a folder on there. I'll be able to show that in the show notes. Okay, for, you know, with Twitter. 
at Osterman1. And if you want to reach out to me in the old school email, with such, you uh, want to use osatruman777 at gmail.com. All right, King, okay. if you like what you've seen and you want to see more, please click on the subscribe link here in YouTube. If you want to see more, okay, when you click subscribe, you'll see a little bell there. Click and ring that bell. You'll see little bars come up around it. What that does, that sets it to where it will send and notify you when my next episode comes out, and you can enjoy all the more with us. Okay, peace. May the gods bless you, and may your ancestors bring you all the luck in the world. Have a good one.